Hey everyone, Matt here with Nightrun Studio. Welcome to the Cutscene System tutorial series. In this first video, we're going to get all of our setup done so that each video after this can just add new elements to your cutscene. Let's get started. Now at the core of our system is the cutscene base element here. This is just a game object you'll be able to drag into your scene anytime you want to have a cutscene element, and it'll have a couple of key pieces every cutscene element will need. It'll have the cutscene handler, which allows us to iterate through different elements. It'll have the initiator, which is what actually starts the cutscene, and finally the elements themselves. Here I've got a zoom with all of its options, but there's also all sorts of other elements that could be added. Now when I trigger the event, my handler will just iterate through each of those elements. And we're just going to start by creating all of the scripts we're going to need. So let's begin by creating the cutscene handler script. We're also going to create the cutscene initiator. Now the third script we're creating is the cutscene element base. And one of the things we're going to do here is we're going to be using inheritance so that each of our cutscene elements doesn't have to repeat logic that all of them need. So we'll have this base element that will have certain logic and information stored there that all of the other elements can just borrow so we can avoid duplication and keep our scripts really nice and compact. For testing purposes, we're also just going to create a cutscene element called test which will just be a dummy element here so that we can make sure everything's working at the end of this video. And the cutscene elements themselves are really the core of this system, so let's start off with our cutscene element test. I'm just going to get rid of start and update to begin. Now one thing that we're going to do in every single one of our cutscene elements is have an execute method. For now we want to keep things simple, so we're just going to print a debug log for testing purposes that's just going to say executing, and we'll put plus name, so it'll just print the name of the script itself. Now there's other data that this element is going to need. For example, it's going to need to know how long it should last before moving to the next element. But we don't want to have to create the same variable, in this case duration, for every single element we put in the game. And this is where we're going to use the power of inheritance. We're going to go to our cutscene element base object, and here we can put in variables that we want to be available to every single element. So here I'll create a public float called duration. And in order to make that available to our cutscene element test, we're going to change it so that it's no longer inheriting from mono behavior, but instead it's inheriting from the cutscene element base. Now I want to show you what that looks like. So let's actually begin by going to the hierarchy, creating a new empty object, which is CS underscore base. This is just a copy of all the most basic things every cutscene will need. Let's go ahead and add in our scripts. So let's start by putting in the cutscene handler. We'll add the cutscene initiator. And now we don't actually need to add the base element. What we can do instead is add the specific element that we want, in this case, our test element. And when we put that on there, it gets all of the information of the base plus its own information. So you'll see duration is showing up here, even though it isn't actually in the test script. So we're now able to add cutscene elements, but they're not actually doing anything yet. So let's go back to our cutscene element base script. Here at the moment it's just simply holding information, but we want it to actually have some logic in it that can be borrowed from the different elements. So first off, it's going to need to be able to talk to the cutscene handler so that it can notify the handler when elements are done. So let's make a public cutscene handler reference called cutscene handler. At this point we're just going to add back the start method, and we're just going to let our script know that cutscene handler is equal to, here we'll just type get components cutscene handler, now at this point we're going to create a public virtual void, which is going to function like a normal method, but what it does is it allows our elements to actually override this. Now to make that work though, we need to go back into our element, and instead of this being a public void, it's going to be an override void. This just keeps our code nice and clean so that we can just call execute, and it'll automatically load the logic for whatever element is running. So another method that every single element is going to need is the ability to tell our script that it wants to just wait and then advance to the next element. So to do this, we're going to create a new method, but we don't want a normal method here. We want a coroutine, and so we're going to make a protected I enumerator called wait and advance. Here we're going to make a yield return new wait for seconds, and in the brackets we're just going to type duration. So essentially when wait and advance is called, it will wait for whatever the duration is that we input, then it will tell the cutscene handler that it needs to play the next element. Now the play next element doesn't currently exist, so let's go ahead and create that logic. 
We can head to the cutscene handler, where for now I'm just going to get rid of start and update. And now we need to equip the handler to actually iterate through all the different elements. So to do this, we need a list of those elements. So let's make a private cutscene element base array. That's what these square brackets do, which we'll call cutscene elements. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to quickly make this public and pop back into Unity. With those changes now, if you clicked on your cutscene base game object and open up the handler, you can see that there's now this cutscene elements array. And so we could actually drag elements. I could actually drag this one three times if I wanted. And it now has a list of three cutscene base test scripts that it can iterate through. However, I don't want to have to drag the cutscene elements into my inspector and then also put them into an array. So we're gonna make this private. And rather than dragging them in ourselves, we're just gonna code it so that the cutscene handler automatically loads all those elements into the array by itself. Now to do this, we have to bring back our start method and we're just gonna let it know that cutscene elements is equal to get components. And here we just wanna look for any elements at all that derive from the cutscene base element. Now in order for it to actually iterate through the list, it needs to keep track of which element it's currently at. So let's make a private integer called index and start it at negative one. The reason for this is because in an array, the first element is called element zero. And so we don't want to start with an element already loaded. We'll just put negative one. And that way, when we're ready to load the event, we can bump it up to zero. All right, we've got the functionality for elements. We've got the ability to make a list of them. Now we need to actually iterate through those. So let's make a method called execute current element. And here, just to avoid errors, we're going to create a little check. First of all, we want to make sure that our index is greater than or equal to zero. And the other check we want to do is we want to make sure that the index is not greater than the number of cutscene elements there are. This is effectively going to allow us to end the cutscene once we run out of elements to run. So if we've got a element loaded and we haven't run out of elements yet, we just want to say, hey, cutscene element of whatever number we're currently on, it's time to execute. Now we need a way for this script, the handler, to actually be told when to play the next element. And when we play the next element, we just want to go index plus plus. And so we'll add one to the index and then execute that element. We now have the functionality to iterate through our list because the base, when it calls that wait in advance, it waits for a set amount of time and then calls play next element, which tells the handler to move to the next element and then to play that element. So back in Unity, we're almost ready now. We've got the cutscene handler, which will load all the elements on start. And we've got the initiator, but at the moment the initiator isn't actually telling our handler to start the cutscene. So let's right click there and edit that script. I'm just gonna begin by getting rid of the start and update methods and making a reference to the cutscene handler as we can't tell it to start without actually being able to talk to it. I'll then reintroduce the start method, sorry about that. And we're just gonna let this script know that the cutscene handler is equal to get components cutscene handler. And we'll add some custom trigger types later so that you can have different ways to start your cutscene. But for this one, we're just gonna set it up so that it runs the cutscene as soon as the player enters a trigger area. So to do this, we're just gonna make a method for on trigger enter 2D. Now quite simply, as soon as the player enters the trigger, we just wanna say, hey, cutscene handler, play your next element. But we don't want this to accidentally get triggered if some other object enters the trigger area. So let's just put a check in here to make sure that it's the player. So we can just type if collision.gameObject.tag is equal to player. Don't forget to keep that capitalized. Don't forget to save all your scripts. Now back in Unity, you will want to click on your player and make sure that the player is actually tagged as a player up in the top left here. With that done, let's go to our cutscene base. We're gonna to need to add a box collider or whatever type of collider you prefer. Make sure it's a 2D one. Click is trigger, and then just set the area in which you want the player to actually trigger the event. To demonstrate what's not quite working yet, I'm just gonna add a few more of these test cutscenes. So I'll just put two more of them in there. I'm gonna go in and give them each a duration of one. So once everything is working properly, every second we should see a debug pop-up telling us that cutscene is running. Now you'll notice all of these have references to cutscene handler, and we actually don't need that. The cutscene elements are actually set to find the handler all by themselves. So what we can just do here, we can take that public cutscene handler reference and make it private. This will just clean up our inspector so there's not as many boxes there, since we don't need that one anyways. You can see here now that when we start the game, you can walk over into the trigger area. Our debug prints as it should, waits a second, 
but then it doesn't continue to print. It looks like our handler is only actually running the first element of the array and not the others. So let's just fix that. Now the reason for this is that we are not currently actually telling it to advance. And so what we want to do is in our cutscene element, right at the beginning of execute, we're going to say wait and advance. And actually this is a coroutine, so we need to say start coroutine, wait and advance. This wait and advance coroutine is the one we wrote earlier in the base, which is just designed to wait for whatever the duration is and then move to the next event. Don't forget to save all again. When the scene starts, nothing happens initially, but when we enter the trigger area, you can see that every second our debug prints, happens three times and then ends. Our cutscene is effectively running and while it's super boring, all of the pre-work and foundation has now been laid for our cutscene system. In the next video, we're going to start adding some actual elements in here. We're going to begin with camera work, but please take a second in the comments to let me know what elements you'd like to see in this system, and I'll try to get to them. Hope to see you in that next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.